type. And that is about as good as it gets, I think. If I'm really careful, I won't miss anything. How are we doing? We are down to 75%. So we, as I mean, as you can see, this, this field is untreated apart from the last application of liquid fertilizer on there to the left here so that we don't end up with a two bits that need doing. Uh, but with all of the other fields, I have put solid manure down this year to get us close to where I think the crop needs it to be. And then we're just going to run over with um, liquid fertilizer to top it all off. It does look like there's some mist section to our right there. That's a bit annoying. I'm not. It doesn't look like it's it's registering on the map, and I'm not sure it's going to register as far as the sprayer is concerned. We'll give it a go. So 9:19 in the morning, as far as game time is concerned. So we're still an hour away from the rain. And the rain should just soak this fertilizer into the ground. I mean, the other thing to think about, you know, if, if you're playing somewhat realistically, um, we're playing three-day months. In the real world, there's 30 days in a month, so yeah, I'm not. So that does seem to be doing something. Actually, it is doing something, I think. Yeah, well. I'm just going to take us over to the soybean field and we'll be good to go. And it looked like I'd missed a bit over here. And again, I'm not sure I did. <coughs> Well, maybe I did. Well, <coughs> and this is this is really a challenge between um, what the ground is showing as um, uh, what is it the the sort of the the thing on the ground is darker where we've sprayed and lighter where we haven't but the map itself is just showing a uniform yeah it's good enough plus it's grass so we don't really have to worry too much about it so get that turned back on again now we should see a big change again in the ph levels on this because again it's canola and it demands pretty much the highest nitrogen concentrate. But you can see from where we've spread the manure, we're already starting at a reasonably high level. So um, we're not having to put too much extra in. Okay. I'm going to put this on a worker and I will be back in a couple of minutes.
Okay, I'm back. And, uh, yeah, just using the excuse of I need a refill on my tea to, uh, Go check on the kids who A have been shouting and screaming at each other and B have been using the stove for breakfast. Which I wasn't aware that Mrs. Osa had told them what given them choices on what they can have to eat for breakfast. So I will disengage this now. Take over again. So I thought there was a lot of. Uh, we've used a lot of pans for breakfast. One for sausages, one for eggs, one for. Well, yeah, then we've got toast, then we've got cereal, we've got all the bowls and all the spoons and all the plates. So, okay. But it seems that Mrs. Osa said they could have cereal or oatmeal. Or sausage, egg and toast. Problem is, is I think they used the sausages Mrs. Osa had plans for. as opposed to the sausage patties that are in the freezer. But, uh, oh well. Okay. So I'm going to take a left turn here. We'll do that bit that got missed at the top. Looks like I need two headlands here. For the worker to have been happy. But we're definitely making somewhat of a difference here. As we can see from the mini map. I do love... So one of the things I like about uh, precision farming is when you're spreading lime or fertilizer the mini map will show you the levels that you have currently and that's just so useful because you you can see where you missed as opposed to being here and looking and trying to look for a, a variation in the uh, The what you call it? Um, oh, I really don't know what it's called. Um, the darkness and lightness of the ground, whatever. Yeah, there's there's definitely you know a visual clue where you've fertilised, but once the crop gets quite thick, like it is here, I really can't see it. Short of doing a top down and close in. You know, it's, it's lighter in front of us than it is behind us. But from a distance, you can't see that. So, so the hedge to our left is one of the other ones I demolished and rebuilt. And I've rebuilt it closer to this field. And I may put a farm track in on this side. So that we can reach the field directly in front of us. Which then makes it, I could buy that field directly in front of us and access it from our farm rather than from driving on the road. And for the most part, that's kind of how I'm trying to arrange things. So we're always, we're driving as little on the road as possible. that's the plan oh. interesting patch of dirt directly behind us that didn't get sprayed hmm. so 
not getting the complete width of what the worker did not do here. However, we have to come back down here anyway, so that's done. But per perfect nitrogen on both of our canola fields, that's good. And as I said, we'll do the other ones tomorrow. I will probably look at what uh, contracts are out there right now. How are we do This field is used quite a lot. And the reason this really field is used quite a lot is we really didn't go too heavy with the manure. I should have gone heavier. Um, and when you look at the stack of manure we still have and we now can't get rid of until next spring or next planting season, um, I really should lay it on thicker when it comes to canola fields. Just, just a good plan because I'm producing more manure than I know what to do with. Keep going, go. Um, and the one thing I haven't checked is. Cows. We have 4,750 litres of milk. It looks like they are producing, finally. Note to self, do not sell the old cows before the young cows are producing. So that I will do a turnaround and then I'll check the dairy. But I think the dairy still has ridiculous amounts of milk in it. Okay, one, two, three, five, seven. Productions. Down there. Um, oat flour, we still got 10,000 litres of flour to produce bread. We have 91,000 litres of flour in the bread mill. Um, so... Yeah, that's, that's pretty much enough for a year. Butter, we have 406,000 litres of milk and we go through 15,000 per month. Um, one, two, 15,000 a month, that's six per 100,000. At 180, that's that's a year. 360 is two years. We've got two years of milk in that production facility before I have to worry about restocking it. So for a long time now, what we're going to be doing is just shipping milk directly to the sell point and just selling it because again we're producing way more milk than our productions can even cope with. I could level up that. Uh, one of the mods we're running is um, upgrade productions and what that allows me to do is pay approximately the purchase price again and it will approximately double the production rate. So if we go back and look at that, the dairy is level two, the bakery is level two, the grain mill is level one, and I am producing way more grain than I ever need to. The open air garden is level three, so it's producing a little over three times as many tomatoes as, as, as its base. Plus we're using manure and seeds, so it just produces everything faster. We have manure. We have seeds, we have water, so no big deal there. Five seeds, one seed, five manure, 24 water is, you know, one unit of production. So it allow, rather than placing 10, um, what am I saying? Rather than having 10 uh, gardens, I can produce, I can have one garden with that's at level yeah level 10 okay we'll 
lift that up. And we'll fold it. Um, and the same with productions. I could I could have built a dairy and have two dairies, or I can just pay twice for the dairy and it will double the rate it's producing. Each of the productions can be leveled up to level 10. So 10 times base production. It's actually a little bit more. It's, it's like um, level 1, it's 100%. Level 2, it's 205%. Level 3 is 308%. And so it's a little bit more than 1%, yeah, than, than double, but not significantly more than double. And I think it, it still takes the same price running it so um, you know your production's doubled effectively the monthly cost on the production is doubled too which is one of the reasons why we're using up so much money because we've got productions in permanent running so I guess I'm going back to the yard We'll check the message board and see what contracts are out. Uh, contracts. Lots and lots and lots and lots of mailing contracts. Three fertilizing contracts. I could do those. A uh, bunch of harvesting contracts and a couple of liming contracts. Let's say we take the fertilizing contracts. Um, how many of those took all of them? Okay, and we'll turn the details. So they're going to pay us quite well. Um, the aggregate is it's going to cost us 1600 in... Um, in fertilizer to do it but we already have fertilizer so it's not like it's really going to cost us that much and yeah my basic thing here is because we've got the fertilizer hitched to the back and it is quite a big thing Oh, we fertilizer tank is empty, I think. Uh, yes, fertilizer tank is empty. Ooh, okay, we'll go out partially empty. Uh, we're going to 2082 and 117. Which is up there. I missed a couple of weeds on that field. Um, looks like I might have missed a couple of weeds on that field. However, oh, you can't see um, fertilization on those maps. Anyway, what I want to do is actually look for 20, 82, was it 117? So if we do 82, that's quite a big field. We'll come down to here. If we need more, we can go to the store on the way down to 117, cross to 20 in the back home. Seems to be the, the better plan. I mean, I could, yeah, I could do it backwards, do 20, 117, top off, and then... Uh, do 82 but this does seem to indicate we are going to need a lot more fertilizer I don't think I need because of the way we're plotting okay so there's my garden fence um, which a little bit of an improvement on the uh, hedges I mean, don't get me wrong, I did, when Alien Jim introduced these hedges back in Farm Sim 17, that was quite an awesome piece of work. The problem, 
Um, and and Cavalier Roy explained it. Um, he he originally made this map where you could drive through the wooden posts in the hedge, and um, that was really nice. The problem was when you took a chainsaw to them, the wooden logs or stumps fell through the map because they had no collision and that was actually a bad thing because then they would um, just stay in effect on the map causing lag so he changed them to have collisions so that when you chop them in half the hedge would disappear and the wood would stay on the surface um, and that was sort of okay but it then turned them into sticks with collisions and they cause a big headache for workers so right now I've taken the decision that what we're going to be doing this field is further over than I thought it was um, what we're going to be doing now is... How on earth do I get over there? Please tell me. We are here. It is there. I think we go down here, across there, maybe across there, and then up there. We definitely don't go that way. So yeah, because because of the headaches that the the little wooden posts and be, I think it's because it it's it's a little wooden post. It's not a continuous collision like a fence is. Um, it just confuses the workers and they don't know what to do and they just end up ramming into a post and stopping. Whereas with the in-game hedges. They just drive through them. And with in-game fences, they see the entire fence and just say, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Okay, I'm at 84. Uh, I'm at 84, okay, keep going. And turn left past this field of corn that hasn't been cut yet. Now, I'm not doing a cornfield harvest because we don't have a corn header and I can't afford one. There we are. Field 82 ahead. So we'll, I guess, go through the motions and use the crop sensors anyway, even though they probably don't do much. So this will give us a little bit of money today. Really need to get some more though. And part of the issue is is because um, we are we are spending a lot of money daily on productions, on interest, on the loan, and just having stuff. And I think we have two, two, two leased pieces of equipment. We'll uh, put this on drive. Um, yeah, I've got the baler and the, the milk truck, which are kind of costing us a bit of money, interestingly. Um, oh yes, I wish I could have afforded that. I might have bought that instead of the Fent. Um, it's about the same horsepower. This thing, I don't need one of those. It's a forage wagon. And this thing, well, we bought the, uh, the Trion last year. So I don't need a 